You're tuned into the Nini Show every Wednesday, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. on Nonfiction Radio, WZYE 95.9 FM. And in the building, we have our first guest of the night. We have CR, a.k.a. Conscious Rap. How you doing? I'm doing real good, man. Shout out to everybody listening right now. Nini, thanks for having me on oh, the show. Oh, thank you for coming. Thank Absolutely. you for coming. So right now, we just got into his song, On a Mission, you know, what you think about that, Yanni? How you feeling? I was over here bobbing my head. I'm like, yeah, I was on a mission. So who else was on that um, track with you? So this is one of the more catchy records that I put out. It was a single with me, uh, Maji, and Killer KC, which are two other artists that I'm managing right now. Killer KC had that first verse, and Maji's the one on the hook. Okay, okay. cool, cool. Mm-hmm. So where are you from originally? Well, I grew up in Roselle, but I was born in Elizabeth. Oh, Eastwick. Eastwick. You already know. I live in Elizabeth now, but um, I went to all the public schools out in Roselle, graduated from Abraham Clark. So, yeah, Roselle is really my home. Okay. So, you know, on your journey with music, mm-hmm. you know, when did you start? Well, I started rapping when I was about eight years old, right? So, funny thing is, like, I was walking around the Home Depot, right? My mom used to take me in the stores. I'd just wander around all by myself all the time, get lost and shit. So, Trying to get kidnapped. Right. <laughs> like it is. In today's age. But anyway, so I was walking and then I seen like um, a CD or something on the ground and it was a mixtape. It was a Jay-Z and the Rock versus 50 Cent G unit, right? It was a bootleg, obviously, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, back when CDs were really popping. So I, I took that and I listened to it and it was, um, you know, songs off for the Black Album. And that's when I fell in love with rap. Before that, I really wasn't listening to rap music, like to believe it or not, I was listening to Backstreet Boys. I was listening to Britney I think Spins. all of like, us were at that time. Yeah, though. like at that time, like it was really like pop was just what what I was listening to. But then I fell in love with rap, became a huge Jay Z fan, and I taught myself how to rap. I would memorize their lyrics, and then I would just learn how to rap it. And then you know, I eventually learned how to write my own stuff. But I started freestyling when I was in the fifth grade. I was ten years old. Every day after school, me and my friends freestyle. I didn't start recording until I turned 16. Yeah, then after I started recording, I got my first uh, deal as an independent artist um, with a label out in New York when I was 19. Didn't work, didn't work out like that. The situation wasn't really a good situation. So then I ended up creating my own label at 23, which was about three years ago. Um, in January, called okay. Jump Out the Frame, JOTF Records. And JOTF Records, that's yeah. that's really that impressive. Yeah, it's that's been really a long impressive. journey. Like right. music is my life. Like I love music. Like I, I I love rap. I'm a rap fanatic, but I appreciate other genres. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, rap. I didn't come into rap till later. Pop baby too. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I did enjoy that pop music. I'm not gonna lie. I enjoy jazz, reggae, because I'm Haitian, and you know I got a lot of Caribbean friends. Right, right. Yeah, so. so like I said, on your journey. So he's been, you know, you've, you've done a time. lot in, in music right. right now. So what has been your favorite part of it so far? Um, the, My favorite part has been the way that people have been responding to my creation, which is Jump Out the Frame Entertainment. Mm-hmm. That's my baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, I put my all into it because at that point, that's when I decided to go full on into music and dedicate my entire life to it. Because I was 23 years old when I started and I just transferred to Jersey City University. I was living on my own. And that's when I really learned, you know, the true definition of entrepreneurship because I didn't have a job when I was in college. I was supporting myself, had my own apartment and started my company. I was doing events, everything, putting out music, music videos because I was doing photography, hustling, trying to get my bread together. And, you know, I was doing what I had to do. I took two buses and two trains just to get to school every day because I lived in Elizabeth and I had to go all the way to Jersey City. But I got it done. And like. Yo, honestly, it was the hardest time in my life as far as the the music goes, but it was the most rewarding because right. everybody around me loves what I do. Like, mm-hmm. it's crazy. My life is a movie, right? So now. everything was like self taught. Like nobody taught you. Like, well, you just re- research. A lot of it was researching YouTube. YouTube is amazing. Yeah, YouTube, that's your best friend. friend. Yo, YouTube is amazing, but it's like I always would go and make friends with people who were better than me at what I was trying to do. Of course. Because they would teach me things that made me so much better. And, you know, I've wore a lot of different hats because I had to. You yeah, know, starting my own company, I had to make my own logo. So I had to do, um, you know, Photoshop. I had to figure that out. I had to, you know, I was still trying to put on, like, my first two mixtapes that I put on my SoundCloud, I recorded at home on my laptop. I had to engineer it myself. So I had to YouTube stuff on that. Before I really built a relationship with a um, with a studio. Shout out Cerebral Sound Studio Solo was good. 
I just have you, but you know but you know what's good about that is that like when you're a boss you know what I'm saying yes. which you are because you you run your own stuff and you have your own label yes. when you're a boss knowing how to do all of that stuff is a necessity it's a necessity right you you need to do that because yes. you wouldn't be able to you wouldn't be able to put other people in positions to do what you right. need to do because how would you supervise the quality yeah. of your work because now yeah. you need to know better so that's right. that's actually like one of the best things that mm-hmm. could have could have happened and yes. like you having drive like that that's that's very inspiring right. i appreciate that that's very inspiring like, I gotta a lot get of people it. don't like, a lot of people can't do that right you know appreciate what i'm saying that. so what what inspired you to do all of this um honestly it was just my, my like the way my life is set up like for one like my parents um i'm an only child both my parents they suffered from um depression my mom had postpartum depression and then eventually developed to a chronic depressive situation. And then my dad also was suffering through depression. And me being the only child, I was the only one there in that environment. It was a very toxic environment. Yeah, I was going to say that, being around that. Mm-hmm. Growing up with my parents, like my dad had a lot of bad habits. You know, my mom did too. So it was just like, you know, it wasn't really the best example. But the good thing is that didn't really happen until my preteens because my childhood, I had to like, great childhood my parents were doing well they were you know making money they were healthy it was later on in my preteens when my parents started you know falling off and you know they're they, they're they're immigrants they came from haiti so it's not like they had the financial education that they needed to really succeed so it was like a lot of things they weren't able to do and it inspired me to just work harder because i knew i'd have to start something that was going to be big enough to take care of me and the family mm-hmm. I want to create and the family that already exists. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And actually, um, me and Honest were talking about that in the car, about, like, toxic family environments and about how, like, how to overcome that and how to become our own people. So how did you how did you deal with that? Because that's a lot for a pre-teenager. So, like, what were some things that you did to cope with that? Well, to be totally honest... I smoked weed and I got drunk. Okay. And I was hanging with my friends. I was, it it was, it was, it wasn't good. You know what I'm saying? Because I was on the street all the time. Like, I was in eighth grade drinking 40s. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I was so depressed. Yeah. I get it. You know what I'm saying? I was at Pine Park in Roselle getting drunk, smoking weed. And it was like, I would do that. And it wasn't until... I turned 16 that I really took music seriously. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with that came um, a partnership with a couple people I was working with at the time. They were older than me, and I was working at Kmart at the time. And, um, you know, working with them, we were freestyle on break, and they noticed I was nice, so they invited me to come record, and all they had was, like, Rosetta Stone headphones and a laptop. But it was oh, the wow. vibe that they had. They were, like, older, so it was, like, I'm an only child, so they was, like, older brothers for me. Mm-hmm. So they brought me in, we recorded, and it was just, like, I fell in love with the process of creating music. You know, I, I already appreciated music, but now I was learning the craft of it. And I used that as my escape. You know, early on, I wasn't really making conscious records, anything like that. But I called myself conscious rap because I wanted to grow into that person. But at that age, I just wanted to sound hot. You know what right. I'm saying? When I was young, you know, Lil Wayne was the shit. So so you just started that, like, randomly when you were younger? Like, so that name? you want to know the story? Yeah, I want to know the story. Yeah. Yeah. Funny. <laughs> All right, so originally, CR didn't stand for conscious rap, right? Told you I worked at Kmart, right? Oh gosh! And I was like, now this. <laughs> I'm like, oh gosh! You, you know, I used to work at Kmart, right? <laughs> all right, so the dudes that I used to work with, right? I used to come to work all the time. You know, it was pretty tedious. I worked in the men's section. I was folding all the time, so I got high as hell before work all the time, right? So I would get to work, and they'd be like, "Yo, you cooking?" Oh god! Right? And then they, you know, my name's Rodley, so they used to call me Cooking Rodley. <laughs> That's how CR, I like it though. Yeah, it's cooking funny, CR. right? And I was mad young, so I was like, all right, well, fuck it, cooking Rodley, CR, right? But then as I took music seriously, I was like, damn, I'm gonna have to come up with it. If my parents hear this shit on the interview, <laughs> <laughs> right though, cooking Rodley, right though. I was just like, hmm, I gotta come up with some other shit. And then I really just thought about how, what direction I eventually want to evolve right. with music. You know, my idols are like Nas, Tupac, so it was mm-hmm. like for me that was conscious music, yeah. and. You know, that's when I was just like, you know, I'm going to call myself conscious rap. I want to live up to that and become that.